Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I feel like I've not started a vlog in my car in a really long time. This is nostalgic, but I am headed to my parents' house to pick up Ember. It's currently about 7.15 a.m. Billy and I got home pretty late last night from Arizona and my parents took care of Ember while we were away. So first things first, I gotta go pick up the pooch and then we're gonna spend the day together. You know, you and me, we're gonna reset after travel. We're gonna touch base on books that I've read, how my February goal went, what's coming up in March. We got a lot to chat about, but first let's go get the doggo. Hold on, uh -uh. You excited to be home? One second. Go ahead. Are you happy? <laughs> home sweet home. Go ahead. Next on the list is unpacking because I and team unpack as soon as possible <laughs> upon returning from a trip. Usually I will unpack literally at night as soon as I get home from the airport or driving wherever. But last night, because Billy had to get up early for work this morning, we wanted to get to bed right away. So I saved it for today, but I actually enjoy unpacking. <laughs> I find it much more refreshing than packing. I enjoy packing, but it's more stressful because I'm worried I'm gonna forget something, whereas unpacking, it's just like a fresh slate, you know? A clean slate, a fresh start. But back to the Arizona trip that I mentioned. So this was a trip that was a, an opportunity for Billy and I to kind of just spend some time together, reconnect. I know we just took a trip recently to Jordan back in December, but Billy is about to start a, essentially a second job. He still has the same job that he has, but he's now doing another job on top of that, which he was doing. It's really confusing um, because he, does like consulting work on the side. So he tends to have multiple things going on, but this is like a bigger gig that he will have. All that being said, this trip was an opportunity for us just to spend some quality time together, but also it was driven by my 40 before 40 list, which I now have five things checked off of. We're gonna come back to one of them a little bit later on in this video. But during this trip, we flew into Phoenix and then we stayed in Flagstaff, but a majority of our time was spent in Sedona, which was just a place both of us really wanted to visit. So while we were there, we also drove up to Page, Arizona, which is where Antelope Canyon is. And that is a place that I have wanted to visit for a very long time and hiking Antelope Canyon, hike is a very loose term, was on my 40 before 40 list. So check that off. Then we also drove up to the Grand Canyon, the South Rim area and took a helicopter ride over the Grand Canyon, which I had riding in a helicopter on my 40 before 40 list. So that is now a check as well. Phenomenal experience. Can't recommend it enough. I mean, it was pricey. However, I do think it was worth it. We had just a great time from start to finish. I think it exceeded our expectations. The scenery was beautiful. And shout out to Stacy. Stacy, if you're watching this, you know who you are. But Stacy is a local to the Sedona kind of area in Arizona and was able to give us so many great recommendations. So we ate fantastic food, we did great hikes, and it just all around was a phenomenal trip. So if you have not been to Arizona, specifically like Sedona area, highly recommend. And I did wanna share a couple of like favorites, things that I got just before this trip in order to make it a little bit easier. So let me finish like unpacking the main part of the suitcase and then I will show you those. Okay, so I know that belt bags or what I used to call them fanny packs have been 
popular for the past couple of years. And I've had several belt bags. Um, and most recently, the one that I had got left behind in Jordan. I still don't fully understand how it happened. I think it fell in our room and I just never picked it up. I don't know, but I had to get myself a new belt bag because I love traveling and having a belt bag to hold on to like my phone and cards and the chargers and things that I need easy access to within the airport and within flying. But then also for things like hiking, it's just really nice to have because I don't carry a purse. I'm not a purse girl. But this belt bag, I got it on Amazon. I'm not kidding. It was like $10, I think less than that. I love it because it has so many pockets. And a lot of the belt bags I see, it's like one main pocket and maybe you get a little baby pocket somewhere else, but I want organization, so I need sections. And this one, there is a little zipper pocket in the very back. Then you have two different like main pockets. So this one, you have the main pocket and then there's also like this little section in there as well. You have another pocket that same size. And then in addition, there are two little pockets up here. So I had like my AirPods in one and then some like little stevia packets in the other and my highlighter. And then there's also a front pocket. And this is where I put like my chapstick and extra hair ties, things like that. And it just, it's fantastic. I also love the material. It's that kind of like nylon-y type material. So it's easy to clean, great purchase. Also, just before this trip, I had to get a new phone because my other phone just, it went kaput. And I didn't necessarily want a new phone because they're expensive, but I had to get a new phone. And so I opted for the, what is this? The 15 Max Pro or whatever. I was like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But that being said, I had to get a new phone case. And this phone case, cause let me show you. I need protection, okay? Cause I do drop my phone a lot, but I really like that this one has a piece that will actually slide. And so it covers up your camera and, or not your, yeah, your camera. <laughs> and then you can cover it. So for things like hiking, I wanted to be able to have the camera closed so that if I drop it, I'm not gonna damage the camera lens. There also is this little piece here that you can use as like a little stand. So it's just a tiny piece that folds out. But I then needed to get a new pop socket cause my pop socket broke. And I realized that they now make pop sockets with a built-in wallet. The world is a lovely place. So previously I had the MagSafe wallet and the MagSafe pop socket, and I would just switch them out depending on what I was doing, where I was going, but now I don't have to cause it's all in one. So it sticks on the back with the MagSafe. It has the pop socket, but then it also has the cards. And what I really like is you can push here and then the cards pop up. And so I just carry my credit card and my ID, but when I'm traveling, it makes it really easy because I can get access to it and I don't have to carry a bunch of bags. So I just wanted to share that because those are some of my recent favorites. And when I do these little vlogs, I like to share the things that I am loving. Also, <laughs> I stockpile snacks when I travel. It's a comfort thing. And so I always take the snack mix on Southwest, but I don't eat it, I bring it home and then I typically eat it <laughs> within the next couple days, but I like to have snacks just in case. Also, I brought a book this time. I never used to bring a book when I was flying, but now with my trying to read 52 books in a year, I've got to always be reading, but we're gonna do a book update in a bit. Um, I'm gonna finish unpacking and then we get to do one of my favorite things, which I'm excited about. Since we are post-travel, Billy and I's fridge and pantry are very bare. But one of the things I love is doing the first post-travel grocery shop where you just stock up on things. It's a good feeling. I love grocery shopping, but I will say Billy and I have been leaning heavily into the 
grocery pickup, the curbside, which we shop at HEB, it's a Texas grocery store chain, and they make it very, very simple, very easy. There's no fee. I will say some of the items are a couple of pennies more when you purchase them through curbside compared to in the store, but we have found that it really cuts down on impulse buys, so we actually end up spending less <laughs> than when we shop in the store. Plus, it's just a lot more efficient because the app will save like the things that we buy frequently, plus you don't have to walk around the store and get all your items. You just put in for a pickup time and it lets you know when it's ready, you go pick it up. So I just got the notification on the app that the order is ready, I'm gonna grab it. And then once I come back, we'll do a little grocery haul. I'll show you what I got. Show. Yeah. Perfect. And just in a trunk for you? Yep, and there's some bags back there. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Let's do a grocery haul. I will say, typically I grocery shop on Sundays because it is already Tuesday, it's two less days that we had to shop for. So it's a little bit lighter than normal, but let's start with proteins. We get a big flat of chicken almost every single week between dinner and my lunches, which I will show you shortly. We end up going through the whole thing. I meant to also get shrimp. However, I placed this grocery order while we were driving from Sedona to Phoenix yesterday and service was intermittent. And I think when I added the shrimp to the cart, they didn't actually add to the cart because I didn't have service. So long story short, we should have shrimp, but we don't, so I'll have to go get shrimp. It's fine. Um, let's get cold stuff put away. So riced cauliflower, I got two bags. These are for my lunches. I'm gonna show you what I do with it, but it's just the basic original. It has really grown on me. I did not used to like cauliflower rice, but now I really like it. Some plain non-fat Greek yogurt. I really like the Chobani brand, but I almost always have at least one of these on hand, if not two. Same thing with unsweetened vanilla almond milk. We just get the HEB brand, but I add this into like protein shakes and anything that calls for milk. I don't know. Uh, these are for Billy. These are just little individual creamer packs. He takes these to work with him and he needed some more. Oh, we also have some reduced fat cream cheese. That is for a recipe I am making later this week. Okay, let's do produce, because there is a lot of produce. Big bag of carrots, that's one of our favorites because we can add it into things, we can eat them on their own, we can eat them raw, we can eat them cooked, and the whole bag is super cheap. Also got a head of cauliflower that we're gonna have one night for dinner. Asparagus were on sale, typically they're like almost $5 and they were on sale for like $1.90. So we're gonna have some asparagus later in the week. Celery, I got two onions, which those will go somewhat in my lunches, but also in dinners. Some Roma tomatoes. We're gonna make some bruschetta chicken later this week. We always have apples on hand. That's one of our go-tos. And we just buy whatever apples are on sale or are cheapest. So this week I got five gala apples. Okay, we have some squash. That's for dinner tonight. Actually, I'm gonna leave those out since that's for dinner tonight, but these can go at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna need to prep those, so I'm gonna leave that out. Okay, cauliflower, a little too bulky today. There we go. Okay, then we have <laughs> some sweet potatoes. Massive, and then th this is quite possibly the strangest looking one I've ever seen in terms of shape, but that's gonna go in a Thai green curry we're making along with some bell peppers. So I got five green bell peppers and then 
two red bell peppers. These will be for dinners, but also part of my lunches. And then a spaghetti squash, because we're gonna make a buffalo chicken spaghetti squash casserole later in the week. And then just some things that we needed that we were out of, the less sodium soy sauce, some light coconut milk, that will be for the green curry that we make. We were out of sweet relish, which I add this into like tuna and things like that, so I got some more. And then we needed celery salt for a recipe and didn't have any. So that's it. This week is definitely very produce heavy because again, we used up everything that we had before our trip. I will have to go to the store and get some shrimp, but otherwise that will make us not a lot of snacky things because I bought a lot of snacks around like Christmas time that I'm still working through. So we've got snacks. We just, we, we didn't need any more snacks, trust me. And then I took a little bit of time to meal prep. I feel like, especially with produce, you wanna make sure it is ready to go and accessible. Sorry, Ember is <laughs> scratching herself. But I shredded some chicken, which will be for my lunches, as well as these bell peppers and onions. But we'll come back to that. This is just extra onion, which will get added into a few meals throughout the week. I went ahead and washed peeled and cut up carrots. These are for tonight as well as the squash. These will get added into the curry and then these will get added into the buffalo chicken bake. And I used one of the divided containers because I'm also gonna chop up celery and onion, but I'm gonna wait and do that later in the week. I will link, these are the Rubbermaid Brilliance containers, the glass ones. And then this is a set I got on Amazon, but they are glass and they have dividers in them, which I really like. So I will link those down below if you are interested. All right, let's do a little goal check-in since it's almost the end of the month. And if you saw my previous vlog where we are getting ready for February, then you know my February goal was to solve a Rubik's Cube. And this was also on my 40 before 40 list, which I mentioned earlier that I've now checked off five things and that includes solving a Rubik's Cube. If you follow me on Instagram, then you saw I actually accomplished this on February 1st. <laughs> I watched a 10 minute YouTube video and followed along. Now it took me longer than 10 minutes, but I would say within about an hour, I had it solved and then it was just a matter of getting faster. So I will link the video I used to learn down in the description box because it was really helpful. Currently my best time is two minutes and 19 seconds. I would like to get under two minutes at some point, but I also feel like I need a different cube because the cube that I have, it just, it moves almost like too easily, but then it kind of gets stuck at some points. And so it's a matter of getting the, the cube to go where I want it. I need cube control, that's what I need. But regardless, February goal, check, solved a Rubik's cube. So let's chat about March. My March goal is to get certified to teach in Texas. And I know as soon as I say that, I'm going to be bombarded with questions of, are you going back to the classroom? When are you going back to teaching? All of those things. And honestly, I don't have a concrete answer. For me, I just would like to be certified just in case if an opportunity comes up, I can take advantage of it. I have kind of always said if the right position became available, I would go back into the classroom. It's just a matter of finding that right fit. And I love what I'm doing right now, so it's not that I feel this need to, to do something different or to go back to the classroom. There are elements that I miss. Of course, there are things about it that I don't miss and aspects of what I'm doing right now with essentially teaching teachers that I love so much more than the classroom. I mean, there's always this give and take, but I think I want to get certified to go through the process so I have a better understanding of what Texas teachers go through to get certified and just to have that availability. So that's as big of an answer as I can give you right now for my future teaching plans. But I am going to document the process. Hold on, let me throw this. 
I am going to vlog kind of behind the scenes as I get certified. So you'll get to see plenty more about that. And I'm sure as I go through the process, I'll have more thoughts to share, but just wanted to touch base for now, let you know that's where we're kind of going for the month of March. Now let's chat books because I'm a reader now. <laughs> Who would have known? One of my 40 before 40 list items is to read 52 books in a year. And I'm happy to report I'm on track thus far. I read six books in January and four more in February. So I'm at 10 total. I'm gonna go through my thoughts on the February books and share the March books that I plan to read. By the way, I have these all linked on an Amazon list. Now I do have one list for like personal books and then one list for teaching books, but both of them will be linked down below. The first one I read was Building Thinking Classrooms in Mathematics, and I really enjoyed this one. I think if you are a math teacher, I do recommend it. It's a little bit of a longer read because it's more of a textbook format. And if you can't tell, I am a highlighter when I read and then I go through and take notes in my notes app. I can show you that in a future blog. But there are definitely things in this book that most teachers are like, yeah, that's not possible for me or that wouldn't work for me. And I think that that's fine. I feel like every educator should go into a PD, whether it's a book or a, a seminar or a conference with the idea of everything's not gonna work for me and my students and that's okay, but let me find a small handful of things that I can use that will improve my practices. So I did really enjoy this one. The next one I read was called The One Thing, The Surprisingly Simple Truth Behind Extraordinary Results. This one was okay. I'd give it like a three out of five stars, but I got a couple of things out of it. I felt like it was very much repetitive in terms of productivity, time management. I, I Everything from this book I've gotten from other books. I didn't have a whole lot of takeaways, but I do think it's a good just kind of reminder. So. The next one is You Can't Screw This Up by Adam Bornstein. This is like a diet nutrition related book and it's very balanced and common sense and sustainable. I mean, the whole thing is about being able to eat takeout and still maintain the you know healthy lifestyle that you want. It's very practical. I think there's a lot of great tips in here that you can put into practice. So if that's something that interests you, I'd highly recommend it. So that will be linked for you down below. And then the final one I read was The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Not a fan. First of all, it just was different than what I expected it to be. It's all about how to basically cut down the number of hours that you work so that you can travel and live the life that you wanna live now rather than waiting until retirement. And I can get down with that, but I, feel like the way that he kind of outlines for you to do it is not very practical. And also some of the things that were suggested, I'm like, that's a little manipulative. And I don't know, kind of doesn't jive well with me ethics wise. It just, it wasn't my cup of tea and that's fine. You know, it's not for everyone, but that's a wrap on February. Looking forward to March. Okay, so I'm trying to balance each month choosing like a nonfiction book that just kind of interests me, an education book, a fiction book, and then a productivity book, and just, you know, a mixture of things. So I'm going to read Productive Math Struggle. I'm going to read Tiny Habits, The Small Changes That Change Everything. I'm going to read the Miracle Morning, which I'm a little um, scared about because I'm not a morning person, but maybe this will help. And then shout out to Valerie. So Valerie has been a longtime follower of mine past couple of years. I think she found me during the pandemic, but she comments on my videos every week and she traveled here to Austin. And so we spent some time to together and just got to hang out and I, she's a doll. Valerie, you're awesome. But she got me this book that she had recommended to me behind closed doors. So I'm excited to jump into this. This will be my fiction book for the month. However, I would like to get five books read in March just because of the way that the weeks fall and I haven't picked a fifth book. Now I'm always open to recommendations. So if you have any, leave them down below. Otherwise, I do have an Amazon list of a bunch of books. It's just a matter of choosing one and ordering it. But as I mentioned, everything will be linked down below if you wanna follow along. Oh, I know what I have to show you. Okay, this is another 
favorite that I have lately. It's an app and someone recommended this to me a while ago. It's called TBR, which stands for to be read. But this is basically what the app looks like. So you're able to log books and it places them on a bookshelf. Let me record my screen. Okay, so this is what the bookshelf portion of it looks like. It lists out your books and you can set a goal for the year. So it's a nice visual way to track progress. But within that, you can also rank the books and give them ratings and put quotes and comments and things. So you can put the format, you can rank it, would you read it again, the start date and end date if you want, and then you can add in like quotations, which I really enjoy. And of course, you can like search for the books. You don't have to manually input it. There's a like discover, you just type in the book. So for example, um, The Miracle Morning will be one of the next ones I read, Miracle Morning. And then it comes right up. And from there, you can just tap on it and then you can click add to to be read and that adds it to your list of like the things you want to read and then once you're done you can add it to read and i just want to share because it's a free app and i think that it's a great way to kind of track and motivate yourself to read a little bit more it is lunch time and i wanted to show you my favorite lunch lately because it's easy, it packs in veggies, and it tastes delicious. So I showed you those rice cauliflower bags that I get at the grocery store. I will just throw this in the microwave. It takes five minutes, and I will split it between two days. So I'll eat half today, half tomorrow. I have those bell peppers and onions that I cut up earlier, so I just throw them in the pan, and I'm just gonna kinda cook them up a little bit. After those cook, I will throw in some of that shredded chicken that I prepared earlier, and then I will mix it all in a bowl with some of this G Hughes sugar-free sweet chili sauce. I absolutely love this stuff. So let me get it all cooking, and then I'll show you the finished product. That's it. I mean, it's not the prettiest meal ever, but it's delicious and it's super easy. I'm gonna let the cauliflower rice finish cooling and then the leftovers will go in here so that tomorrow I'm all ready. All I have to do is cook up the bell peppers, onions, heat it all up and I'm ready to go. Since we're on the topic of food, one other favorite I wanted to share is Melinda's hot sauce. Listen, if you can find this near you, just buy it and thank me later, okay? It is that good. I got a small sample size of this for Billy's stocking and he came home from work after trying it and he's like, that is the best hot sauce I've ever had. So our favorite is the Melinda's black truffle hot sauce, but we also really like the Thai sweet chili sauce. We also like the green sauce. And then we haven't tried this one yet, but it sounds really good. It's a pizza hot sauce. So I know we get them at our local HEB, but I've seen them also at like Walmart and maybe even Target. I'm sure it depends on your area. But if you can find them, highly, highly recommend. All right, let's finish up with some digital planning. I'm gonna show you my February review page. This is from the digital personal planner that Bridget and I sell over on Teaching on the Double. It's also available in Google Slides, but I'm using the tablet version and I always get asked, I'm using the GoodNotes annotation app and I'm using an Apple Pencil, but I already filled it in, so I'm just gonna pop up a screenshot of the page. So for the summary, I just like to kind of highlight the main events from the month and a lot of these I've already kind of shared with you, but I got some products posted, did some PDs, did some consulting, but also did a lot of like personal stuff. You know, Billy and I had Billy's dad over for the Super Bowl. We went to the Gino Vanelli concert. Billy and I went on the trip to Arizona and had a phenomenal time. I got to connect with Stacy and Valerie, and it's just, it's been overall, I feel like a very well balanced month, which is good. My highlights, I put the Arizona trip, solving the Rubik's cube, and then getting to meet both Valerie and Stacy, which brings me to gratitude, just having supportive friends and followers. I don't think, I thank y'all enough for just all of the love and kind words and support that you show me. It truly does make 
what I do feel meaningful and worthwhile. And I don't thank you enough for that. So thank you. <laughs> also having just opportunities to travel and experience the world and then Billy's flexibility with my routine because he knows I don't do well when my routine is off. And so he always does a great job of trying to keep as much in the routine as possible for me. For my ratings, I gave myself a four on intentionality, a three on productivity, and we'll get to that in some of the other items, a four for both physical and mental health, and then I feel like my social health was a five. I had way more social interaction in February than usual. <laughs> my best memory was stopping at a place called Nanny's Tacos in Williams, Arizona, which was about not quite the halfway point, but we stopped there on the way back from the Grand Canyon after the helicopter tour, heading back toward Flagstaff. And I found this place on Yelp. It was phenomenal. Like one of just my favorite meals ever. I had a quesadilla with some consomme and some shrimp tacos and their like queso salsa type thing that's like their house specialty, so good. Uh, for challenges, I put being busy versus productive. I found myself falling into this trap where I end up doing all these little things that aren't really moving the needle forward, but I'm using it as an excuse to not get to the things I really need to do, which are more difficult and challenging. So I need to do better with that. And then also procrastinating larger projects, which goes hand in hand with that. So things to improve. Consistency with my stretching habit. So I've started trying to incorporate just like 15 minutes of stretching each day. And I do pretty well on the weekdays and then on the weekends, I fall off of it. So I need to do better with that. Responding to texts, I am so bad. Any of you who have ever texted me, so like friends, family, whoever's watching this, I respond to texts like two or three days after the fact. So I want to do better with that. And then eating the frog with my power list. That refers to tackling the biggest task first thing in the morning rather than getting distracted with answering emails and all the little piddly things, which that kind of brings me to the like next month part. I want to start prioritizing my most important to do daily, planning further in advance because for example, it is almost the end of February. I technically have two more days, but I have not yet done the March digital escape room template or digital mystery puzzles. So I need to do better at planning in advance to get those things done and then spending more time outside. Now that it's finally warming up, I am as pale as a ghost. So I need to get some more sun, vitamin D, and I wanna prioritize being outside. I wanna keep doing my stretching routine, doing my Spanish lessons on Rosetta Stone. I'm on week five. It's going well so far. And then reading one to two chapters of a book on a daily basis. And then to stop waiting to respond to texts, checking emails first thing in the morning, and then impulse Amazon purchases, which is always a problem. But that's going to be it for this vlog. However, I have some good news, maybe if you enjoy my vlogs, I am making March a month of vlogs. <laughs> Every video that goes up is going to be vlog style, mostly because of my schedule. I'm gonna be traveling to Michigan for McCall and with having to prepare all of those sessions, I am just going to have to vlog because that is more manageable. So I already mentioned I'm gonna do a behind the scenes of getting certified. I'm going to do most likely a like what I eat in a day slash my current workout routine because I always get asked about that. And even though it's not teaching related, it does seem like something y'all are interested in. So that will be coming. I will most likely do some vlogs of getting some planning for the PD presentations done as well as like product creation. But if there's anything specific you wanna see, leave a comment down below because ultimately I wanna make sure I put out content that you enjoy. But speaking of enjoying content, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, okay? It's just a way of telling YouTube that you enjoy my videos and then YouTube will like put them into your feed so that you don't miss any. But leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one. Oh,